Maryland finally broke through under Mike Loxley as the Terrapins went 7-6 and six and made a bowl game for the first time since 2016. The Terrapins are loaded with talent once again this season, but can they build on last year's success? So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down, analyze, and predict Maryland's schedule and record for this upcoming college football season. A season where there's a lot of excitement surrounding this Maryland football program. When you look at the numbers, guys, brought to you by College Football Encyclopedia, the Terrapins return 70% of last year's production. That ranks 41st in the country. And we know the offense is definitely going to be the strength of this team. An offense that ranked 32nd nationally last year, led by their star quarterback, Talia Tungavailoa, yes, the brother of Tua, who set tons of school records last year, averaging over 300 passing yards per game. In addition to him, he has one of the better wide receiver cores in the conference. They landed Jacob Copeland, the transfer wide receiver from Florida. They've got Rakeem Jarrett. They've got Dante Demas, who was back from an injury from last year. This offense, guys, with Talia Tungavaloa slinging it and his pass catchers will be one of the most difficult ones to stop within the Big Ten. Maryland can be really, really good, guys, if they can piece together a solid defense. They were 85th nationally last year and are dealing with their fourth different defensive coordinator in the last four years. The secondary was pretty rough last year. It should improve. A lot of returning talent. The front seven, pretty solid, but there's some inexperience on all three areas, guys, that they're going to have to deal with and work through in 2022. Again, a bowl game. They, they broke through, got there last year. That's the expectation this year for Maryland. But it's a matter of whether or not they can build on the six regular season wins they had last year or if they're going to still stay just about average. You take a look at the schedule. We do think they start 2-0. Uh, shouldn't have much of an issue with Buffalo or Charlotte. So a 2-0 and start for the Terrapins, which in recent years has been the trend. Start strong, finish poorly. They kind of broke that trend last year. They get a test in week three against SMU. And I'm telling you, if you love offense, especially offenses that want to throw, this is going to be the game for you. You've got Tanner Mordecai at SMU with the new head coach in Rhett Lashley. And then, of course, you've got Talia Tungabailoa here at Maryland. Two great offenses, two great quarterbacks. But I'm going to give Maryland the win over the Mustangs because SMU had the 124th ranked passing defense in the nation last year. The game's at Maryland. I don't have faith in SMU being able to stop this passing attack. I think Maryland starts 3-0, guys, as they head into conference play. They go on the road to Michigan to kick things off. We'll go ahead and chalk that up as a loss. They fell to the Wolverines 59-18 last year. And while the game might be a little bit closer because I do believe Maryland's improved, the big house is such a difficult place to play. The defense for Michigan is still extremely solid, regardless of what anybody wants to tell you, regardless of how many people they lost. The Wolverines are still going to be good, and the offense is trending up there as well. On the road, I just don't think Maryland has enough. So they drop that game. And then on October 1st, they take on the other Michigan school and the Spartans, and they win that one. Many upset here over the Spartans, guys, to get them to 4-1. and one. Yes, they lost to Michigan State 40-21 to 21 last year. But let's keep in mind that Michigan State had the worst secondary in the nation in 2021. The worst defense against the pass last year. Maryland at home, I think, exploits that. If they can stay healthy offensively, Maryland will have one of the better offenses within the Big Ten. And I think they're going to be able to exploit that Michigan State defense. The Maryland defense, while nothing crazy special, should be able to slow down that Michigan State offense. I do believe that. Kenneth Walker is gone. Yes, they have two great incoming running backs to the transfer portal, namely Jarek Broussard, but... Maryland slows that down, forces Peyton Thorne to win the game through the air. Something he's capable of doing, but something that I don't think he's able to do now on October 1st. Maryland wins the game. Maryland wins this game. The offenses might trade shot for shot, but I like home field advantage. And Talia Tungavaloa and this offense is a little bit better. They pull off an upset over a nationally ranked Michigan State squad. They're 4-1. and one, and I'm going to give them 5-1 and one with a win over Purdue. And we'll get into the Purdue-Indiana games here in a second. I want to look at Purdue first, though. Another great passing game. So you like offense, this is the game for you. So you got SMU's going to be fun. Michigan State's going to be fun. Purdue's going to be fun because you've got Talia Tungavailoa facing off against Aiden O'Connell, which is arguably the second-best quarterback in the Big Ten, only behind C.J. Stroud of Ohio State. I think Maryland comes into this game riding a high. Sometimes you see letdown games, but I think they're hyped. They're 4-1. They get to stay at home. They face a Purdue squad that, while they do have Aiden O'Connell, do have to replace a few key pieces on both sides of the ball. And making sure that O'Connell has enough skilled players around him to utilize that passing attack is going to be the key. 
I think Maryland at home rides the high. Purdue's coming off a tough road game at Minnesota, possibly a loss there. I think that the Terrapins are able to defeat Purdue here. Again, a Purdue defense that wasn't bad last year, but might be mediocre this year, despite returning eight starters. Maryland wins the game, but then loses the next week in Indiana. And that's what we get into, guys. A lot of you Maryland fans out there will throw a fit, I'm sure, over the Indiana loss. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you disagree with that, mark it as a loss to Purdue and a win over Indiana. Maryland won't beat both. I don't think Maryland beats both Purdue and Indiana. I think they ride the high enough and can exploit the Purdue defense more so than the Indiana defense with that one being on the road and the Hoosiers' defensive strength being in the secondary. The Hoosiers' strength is in the secondary and Indiana hung with Maryland last year, only falling 38-35. to Yes, Indiana scored a late touchdown with a minute left to cut it to three, but still a close game for the entirety of the game. Indiana should improve a little bit with all the transfers they're coming in. The game is at home for Indiana. It's a road game for Purdue, uh, for Maryland. Only their second one, third one of the year if you count Charlotte. I think they fall to the Hoosiers. This is a game where I think the Hoosiers wake up, need the win, and they get it done. If last year's horrible 2-10 and squad can almost beat Maryland, and a squad that shouldn't prove with a lot of big-time transfers now getting to host the game can also do it. I genuinely believe they will. But again, if you disagree, give them the win over Indiana. Give them the loss to Purdue. They will not beat both. So we wrecked through all that, guys. Still only a two-loss Maryland team. They cruise past Northwestern. Northwestern's going to have another rough year under Pat Fitzgerald. 3-9 and nine last year. Could be in store for a similar year this year. Come out of their bye week, and the month of November is brutal. Brutal. So you look at this, guys. This is a two-loss team. 3-1, and 4-1, 5-1, 6-2. 6-2 going into their bye week. Potentially a ranked team. But their first three games out of the bye are Wisconsin, Penn State, and Ohio State brutal absolutely brutal and we'll be the first to tell you right now we think maryland loses all three of those games we think they lose three straight games wisconsin you're facing the number one defense in the country from last year while the badgers may not have a great offense they have a great offensive line and a great defensive line and the defense is going to rebuild 100 percent and i believe with the game being in madison a very difficult place to play i don't think maryland can overcome that they fall to uh, Wisconsin. They fall to Penn State. Last year, they fell to Penn State 31-14 to at home. Now you're going to Happy Valley against another solid Penn State defense and an offense that should get better with every single week. If you can't beat them at home and you lose by 17, you're not going to beat them in Happy Valley, in my opinion. Lose to them. And of course, you lose to Ohio State. They fell to the Buckeyes 66-17 to last year. While this is a bit of a trap spot for Ohio State, considering it's right before they play Michigan, considering it is on the road for the Buckeyes, considering their weakness last year was their secondary and something Maryland could certainly exploit. I don't think Ryan Day allows his squad to slip up here. I also don't think he allows it to be too close. So Maryland maybe scores more than 17, maybe doesn't allow 66, but they will fall to Ohio State. So three straight losses. They've gone from 6-2 and two to 6-5. and five. They close out the year on senior night with Rutgers, and we do think they beat the Scarlet Knights. They beat them 40-16 to last year on the road. That win gave Maryland bowl eligibility. So really, that was a battle for bowl eligibility. The winner goes bowling, the loser stays home. Maryland got that win. Rutgers got to go bowling anyways because of COVID, but still. Got that sixth win. Now I think they're going to get it at home now. Rutgers is improving. They're getting there. But they have some questions on offense. They have questions at the linebacking core. And I just don't think Greg Schiano's squad is ready to take that major next step yet. And I don't think they're going to be able to come on the road to take on an experienced, veteran-led Maryland team. And with that, guys, we have the Terrapins going 7-5. and five. Some Maryland fans might be disappointed with that, but let's keep in mind, that's improvement. You went 6-6 six and six in the regular season last year, 7-5 and five this year, a shot at eight wins going to back-to-back -back bowl games under Mike Loxley. He clearly is having this program trending in the right direction. And Maryland guys will be in just about every single game they play behind the strength of their offense and improving defense and the culture and foundation that Loxley is setting and has been building over these last few years. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to sign up for those today. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.